Hi there, my name is Richard McMunn from the interview training company PassMyInterview.com and in this tutorial I will teach you how to answer technical interview questions. So if you have a technical job interview coming up for any role whatsoever or any organisation make sure you stay tuned because I will help you to pass your interview and to achieve that goal this is what I am going to cover. I will give you a list of technical job interview questions that I strongly recommend you prepare for. I will give you brilliant, unique answers to those questions to help you succeed. I will also give you some really important tips on how you can tackle technical interview questions. And I will tell you about further resources you can get access to, including these slides and the answers to help you succeed. I have also put the timestamp to the various different questions I cover in this video in the description below the video for you. So you can jump to any question at any time that you want to. So the first question I want you to prepare for is, what would you consider when describing something technical to a non-technical person? Now, this interview question assesses your ability to explain things in simple terms without using jargon or confusing terminology. Now, although you will have strong levels of technical ability, other people in the organisation may not have, and it will be your ability to explain things in simple terms that will set you aside from the competition. So here's my suggested answer to the question, what would you consider when describing something technical to a non-technical person? Here's my answer. To begin with, I would assess their knowledge by asking questions to gauge where they were from a technical perspective. So for example, if I were giving a technical presentation, I would need to make sure I tailored that presentation to the person who had the least amount of knowledge in the group. And I would make sure I did not use any technical jargon when describing things to them. I would use visual drawings and diagrams to explain technical subjects. And I would use familiar objects, situations and terminology to explain what it was I was trying to describe. For example, if I were to use everyday terminology and situations that they understood, the information is more likely to be retained. I would take my time to describe everything to them more than once and I would ask quiz based questions to make sure they fully understood my explanations. And finally, I would leave ample time for them to ask any questions they might have and I would make them feel comfortable asking those questions. So that is a great answer that shows you already have a plan in place of how you would explain technical terminology and information to people who don't have the same level or ability from a technical perspective as you do. The next question, how many golf balls can you fit into a school bus? Now, this is more common during technical interviews than you might first imagine. It is a really difficult question and most people will sit there in the interview and think, what relevance does this have to my job? But it, it is assessing your ability to think on your feet and use logic. So this type of technical interview question is designed to throw you. It is also assessing how quickly you can think on your feet. And it's important you use logic and applied thinking to ask, answer the question. So how many golf balls can you fit into a school bus? So we would use the following process. We would first of all estimate the volume of a golf ball. We would then estimate the volume of a school bus and we would need to assume these. We would not be getting them exactly correct. And we would then divide the volume of the golf ball into the volume of the bus and then subtract 20% for the seats, etc. So the interviewer is not looking for an exact accurate answer. The question is more designed to assess your ability to think on your feet and think logically. So here's my answer to this common technical question. How many golf balls can you fit into a school bus? OK, to answer this question, I will need to use a number of assumptions. Now, having personally sat behind many school buses on my way to work, I would estimate the average school bus to be eight feet wide by seven feet tall by 22 feet long. I now need to convert that into cubic feet, which would be eight feet by seven feet by 22 feet, which equals 1,232 cubic feet. I then need to convert this into inches because the volume of one golf ball is approximately 2.5 cubic inches. So, one cubic foot is 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches, which equals 1,728 cubic inches. 
If I now multiply this number by 1,232 cubic feet, I get 2.1 million cubic inches, which is the approximate volume of the bus. I will now divide 2.5 cubic inches for the golf ball into the total area of the bus, 2.1 million cubic inches, and I get approximately 840,000 golf balls fitting into the bus. But however, I also need to remember to take into consideration the seats and the driver's cab, etc. So I would take off 20% for those, leaving me with a calculated estimate of 670,000 golf balls into the school bus. Now, of course, to think on your feet and go through that straight away is rather difficult. So my advice, I would definitely take along a pen and some paper in your pocket to your interview so you could do some calculations in front of them. Now, it's important to remember you are not trying to get an exact answer. You are trying to demonstrate that you can use applied thinking and logic. And that certainly demonstrates your ability to do that. Now, don't go anywhere because I still have more questions and answers to work through with you. But when you're ready, if you want to click that link in the top right hand corner of the video, it will take you through to my website, passmyinterview.com, and you can download my full set of 35 technical interview questions and top scoring answers, including the ones we are working through together today. But here's the next question for, for you. Tell me how future technology advances might impact on your job. Now, this is a tricky technical job interview question because not only is it assessing your understanding of what is happening in your particular industry, it is also assessing your reaction to it. Some people might be negative and think, well, I don't want it to impact on my job. Why should it? Because I'll be out of a job. That's not the way to answer it. You have to be positive about the changes that are happening and show you are willing to embrace them because change is coming. As you know, working in all technical related roles, change is coming, significant change. And we, and we have to embrace it. It's very important. Here's my suggested answer to that question. Tell me how future technology advances might impact on your job. That's a great question, and it is something I've considered quite a bit recently. Whenever I am reading online forums and tech magazines, it is clear changes are coming. Now, a lot of these changes are great, in my opinion, and it just means I will need to keep making sure I add value in my work. Some of the more prominent technology advances include AI, artificial intelligence, and this will significantly change not just the way we work, but also how we deliver services to the consumer. I believe there will be AI enabled cloud platforms that are capable of delivering better functionality and services that are more emotionally driven than we currently have. I believe AI will augment the work we do as opposed to totally replacing it. Now, the challenge for people like me is to make sure the skills and qualities I have complement the new advancements that are coming. And I personally see these as an opportunity as opposed to a threat. That is a really good answer because it shows that you can embrace change positively. You know it's up to you to keep ahead of the game, if you like, and you understand what's coming because you keep your own skills and knowledge up to date. The next question, how do you handle tight deadlines whilst working on technical based projects? So your ability to manage your workload on time and to the right standard is guaranteed to be assessed during your technical job interview. Take the interviewer through the steps you will follow when you work on challenging projects. Here's another sample answer to help you. How do you handle tight deadlines whilst working on technical based projects? The most important thing to always remember when you start work on any project is the initial brief and planning. If you get these wrong, the project will often fail to meet its deadline. I handle tight deadlines by making sure I have the necessary skills and competency levels to complete my work to the right standard. I give the members of my team or anyone else involved in the project advanced notice that they will need to clear their diaries until the project is completed. I will assess any potential threats there might be to the project. Is there anything on the horizon that could cause us problems, such as a lack of resources, for example? Finally, I will always make sure I am willing to allocate additional time outside of normal working hours to get the project finished just in case we run into difficulties. That shows that you are a planner, an organiser, and you can tackle difficulties that come up in projects to make sure they get over the finishing line on time. The next question. How do you keep your technical knowledge up to date? Now, this is a very common interview question asked during technical job interviews. Now, obviously, because tech changes so much over the course of a few years, the employer needs to know you will take responsibility for your own professional development. So here's my example answer to help you. 
How do you keep your technical knowledge up to date? I spend quite a bit of time online outside of work, so I would like to think my technical skills and knowledge are always up to date. I follow a few online forums, including TechSpot and TechGuy. These are also useful if I want to dive deep into a particular subject. I also subscribe to TED.com and in, in particular, I will read the technology section at least two times a week. This is great for emerging trends and it gives me an insight into what is happening now and what is likely to happen over the next few years in my sector. I also make sure I undertake some form of technical development online course via the website Udemy.com at least once every quarter. For example, I recently completed an online SQL course to brush up my skills in this area and it only took me three days to complete. I take my professional development seriously and I will always make sure this is maintained moving forward. So that's another good answer that shows you're organised in respect of your technical competence and you are explaining the different things that you do to keep on top of emerging trends on your technical skills and competence levels. Here's another curveball question. How many streetlights are there in this country? Now, again, this is a curveball question that is assessing your ability to think on your feet and use a logical approach to answering the questions. So here's my example answer. How many streetlights are there in this country? There are approximately 70 million people living in this country. And on average, there is one streetlight for every two houses. If there are on average four people living in every house, this means there is one streetlight for every eight people. So if I divide 70 million by eight, this gives approximately 8.75 million streetlights in this country. Now, of course, that's not the exact correct answer to how many streetlights there are in my country, which is um, the United Kingdom. However, that shows that you can apply logic. OK, you can apply logic to different situations and you can think on your feet. So as I said, make sure you take a pen and paper in your suit jacket pocket if you're taking one or in your pocket, your trouser pocket, so that you can carry out some calculations if need be. And they might even let you use your phone to use your calculator if you need to do so. So next thing to do, I hope you've enjoyed that. Make sure you click that link in the top right hand corner of the video. Go through to my website, passmyinterview.com and just take a look at those 35 technical interview questions that I recommend you prepare for. You can also download the answers in PDF format, including the ones I've covered today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I would very much appreciate your support. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. I've put my LinkedIn link in the description below the video. And it is always great to connect with like-minded professionals such as yourself. And finally, um, please give the video a like because that just tells me you enjoy the content and you find it useful. That motivates me to do more for you. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all the best for passing your technical job interview. Have a brilliant day.